that if by any chance you are approved, you will be swearing to, to protect. And I'm here to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll start with that uh, uh, very point. This is the Woodley Estate. Woodley Estate is a property that belongs to the, now the county government of Nairobi. Uh, and I want to put it uh, very clearly here that I stayed in Woodley and our family has always had that premises. Now I want to put it on record that to this day we pay rent to the county government of Nairobi. At no time has that property ever been transferred. I want to put it on record here that the ethics or the Kenya anti-corruption body at that time went on a tangent that they had not verified the facts. I ended up also seeking legal redress for defamation on their part and for them having, been, having given out misleading information. Mr. Speaker and Mr. Chairman, as we speak today, the same property belongs to the county government of Nairobi and we pay rent. I will not be paying rent for a property that is personally mine. And therefore, I was not involved in any land grabbing whatsoever. The records are there, and I can re request that even this committee can go further and seek uh, whatever evidence they wish from the county government uh, of Nairobi on that particular issue. And hopefully, it will also be put to rest, because it was, in my view, a witch hunt at that time. Mr. Chairman, I also want to say that it is on the coalition agreement, it is true that uh, the founding members of Kenya Kwanzaa, that is Amani National Congress, uh, a party that I belong to, but I'm no longer the party leader, uh, the Ford Kenya, uh, Mr. Chairman, you happen to be a member of that party and of course the UDA party, headed by the President of the Republic of Kenya. We did enter into a coalition agreement which we submitted to the Register of Political Parties and it is a valid legal coalition document. Mr. Speaker, when we were forming government, we were alive to the fact that there are issues that can be done and executed by the President through the executive order. And these are now being manifested through executive order number one. Now, the streamlining and clarity that we spoke about would be those that would help in refining the mechanisms of coordination of government, but they do not in any way negate the fact that the President constitutionally and in accordance with the Coordination Act has the powers to set up his government and assign functions, and this is under Section 132 of uh, the Constitution, assign functions to his cabinet secretaries or to other persons in government in a constitutional manner to assist him in the delivery of services and uh, leading the country. So I believe that we have not breached any law uh, and when we talked about looking at the Coordination Act was in the context of strengthening that Coordination Act and not necessarily saying that it, it is an impediment. Honorable Naisula. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Honorable Musalia, you have been a fierce critic of the previous regime and especially on matters corruption. 
and if the recent events by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution to withdraw cases of corruption are anything to go by, how do you intend to fight corruption in public service when it is clear that there is no political will to fight it, and what are your views on the withdrawal of these corruption cases, and why at this particular time? Thank you. Mr. Chairman. For your answer, yes. Honourable Members, we did agree as a matter of procedure that you lift your tag and not your hand. So you wait when the member has finished, the nominee has finished, then you lift your tag. It makes it easier for the media and for us here. I think what we can do, if you have a pen and paper, Honourable Mdavadi, we can take two, three, four questions, then you can be able to answer. Okay, so raise your tags. Number one is Naisula, number two is Robert Mbui, number four is Major Russell, number five is Emase. Then after that, we'll go another round. So know your number, when one fi and I encourage you to ask one question each. So I can, you, deal, I can deal with that on first, and then we come to the second. Yeah, deal second. with that, then the rest will follow okay. in the manner we have given the numbers. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to say that, first of all, we need to, I need to appreciate, and we all ought to appreciate, that uh, the Office of the Director of Public Prose Prosecution is an independent office, uh, and we have no oversight over that office. Uh, it is independent and it makes its own decisions. So I would, the details and circumstances of why he would drop cases, I think that office would be best suited to respond to it directly. Uh, but going forward, I think one of the things that uh, we want to point out is that in the fight against corruption, um, I think we should move away from any attempt to weaponize or to try and use such battles against corruption for political purposes. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I am so refrained to comment in detail because, uh, as I said, the DPP's office would be best suited to respond to this. But I think going into the future, uh, it should be clear that uh, uh, whenever we are dealing with corruption, we must avoid anything that is a witch hunt, anything uh, that is politically instigated, uh, and we must be sticklers of the law. And going forward, I think what is important is through Parliament uh, to see how independent institutions within the justice system and of course those that handle other matters uh, are properly resourced so that uh, they can do their work without any fear uh, or favor uh, whatsoever. Thank you. You'll record the next four questions and then answer them in the row in which they came. Yeah, Robert thank, Mbui. yeah thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, consistency in leadership is very, very important, especially when one is nominated to a position to serve in the cabinet. Uh, I would like to ask the nominee, uh, during campaigns, you are very persistent in uh, castigating the change of constitution uh, under the BBI. And uh, I want to quote that uh, consistently, you said that the Handshake brothers were hell-bent on creating positions creating positions instead of dealing with the obvious things of high cost of living. Uh, now that you have been nominated to this position, which is one of the positions that we were talking about, which is the position of Prime uh, Minister, uh, do you still hold that view? Secondly, you are also totally opposed to the issue of borrowing uh, during the campaign trail. Are you still opposed to this government borrowing any further monies? And thirdly and last, um, I, did I want you to stick to an average of one question. I'll tolerate two. Yeah. Three is, in, is, is not right. Very important. Uh, because Mr. we are almost 21. And you saw the, how quickly I was speaking. 
<laughs> to make sure that uh, <laughs> it doesn't diminish the substance of the question. <laughs> but I'll allow you, Thank but you. honorable members, going forward, I encourage you to ask one question each, if you can. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your indulgence, Chair. And this is an issue to do with uh, what the President talked about when uh, he was appointing this office. And he said that uh, after the office of the President and the Deputy President, this would be the third most powerful position. Um, the Constitution gives the third most powerful position in the country to the Speaker of the National Assembly. Uh, what is your comment on that? Thank you. The next is uh, Russo. <coughs> After Colonel uh, Russo, we have Posey, <coughs> then Emerson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. The, the question I want to pose to you, Honorable Mudavadi, at the heart of uh, this vetting is honesty, integrity, patriotism, trust, and acting in the greatest interest of the Republic of Kenya. As a former finance minister, and also looking through what Kenya Kwanza came up with as a manifesto, uh, what are the likely things you are likely to do uh, as the ringmaster or as the coordinator of uh, government activities, uh, the indicators of economic revival, or things you are likely to put in place for Kenyans to begin to start having money in their pockets? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. You are the most disciplined, being a military man. Next is the Honorable Kosing. Uh, th thank you, Chair. <clears throat> and I want to congratulate the nominee for being uh, nominated for this very uh, position. But, Chair, let me ask the nominee, being a high-profile person in Kenya and we, and we respect him, really, does, it be, does he believe that this office exists? Being the first, and that in accordance with Honorable Speaker or Chair, 